going to start our series off by looking at the anti-Sicilians. Now the anti-Sicilian from this chapter is going to be specifically on move 3, B3. And we can categorize anti-Sicilians as anything that is not an open Sicilian or D4 on move 3. So the main idea that is semi-aggressive in this variation is going to be for white to move his bishop out to b2 and castle queenside so we need to play prophylactically against that idea so starting off this recommendation I really like with playing the double fianchetto and after bishop b2 that's the main line the sidelines run with the Maroxy bind structure where we don't worry too much about e5 because that e-pawn is going to get weak long term and we can focus on it very quickly and if not in this type of variation you'll see sacrificing the pawn isn't really a sacrifice because you get so much play on the open g file the other main variation besides c4 is playing d4 immediately and there's a neat trick here that you need to be aware of because the weaknesses on this long diagonal we first attack the pawn, he's got to defend it we attack the knight because it's weak and when he defends it we have queen f6 which is an odd move but it creates a lot of practical problems because of the pin so the best white has here is to play c3 to stop it and then after knight c6 black clearly has a solid game anytime you find white using most of his pieces to defend and you're attacking um, I'm going to go ahead and go with black's equalized, if not, it's better. So, on to the main line. This is the only line that can pose any problems, and as long as you know what you're doing, uh, you should have no difficulties whatsoever. So, after bishop b2, bishop b7, queen e2, and, I mean, his idea, like we stated before, is to play knight c3 and castle queenside. So, we need to play immediately against this idea. So, developing pieces towards where the king's going to go. And now, this is probably the key move of our play and the variation. And it's a6. And it seems simple, but, I mean, it goes along with the idea that we need to create counterplay where his king's going to be. So we're preparing the move b5. Now, after a6, sometimes white will try to avoid the oncoming attack and we'll go this way and as long as you remember to challenge this bishop with yours with the stutter step bishop b7 to f6 um, you really shouldn't have any problems in the position because after castles d6 um, the d4 square is going to be yours and white can't ever really open up the position favorably can't play e5 or d4 so back to a6 castle queenside is going to be the main line b5 um, and now again if they try d4 you simply take and then use the open file and you can see that the bishop's coming to c5 with tempo and the queen's coming to a5 and clearly we have an attack and I don't really see what white's doing in the very least white's gonna have to waste numerous tempos like moving his queen to get his bishop out from f1 and black will have ample time to castle and get everything sorted. So in this position king b1 is the main line and after rook c8 white has to get developed at some point and the main idea here for black is to simply drop this knight into d4 and then it's going to open files and create problems so white plays against that idea and now the only line that can be troublesome is e5 and white's pieces get kicked all around the board and notice how everyone quickly and efficiently piles up on this pawn and after h3 we win the pawn and we're not so worried about this tactic because the liquidation that occurs it's clearly just a better end game for black now there are absolutely no problems from this position. Just go a few moves further in this uh, example game. 
Black clearly has all the trumps here. He's got space. Uh, the only issue that he's having is this weird bishop on b7. And after d4, we can play on the dark squares, get some space. And I'll go ahead and end the line there because clearly this is a good position for black. And you know what to do at all.